You know what the fuck going on, man. It's Big Homie Mac, man. Big Dive Business, bitch. And we in here with 317 A&R turning locals into stars, bitch. So, any, um, any producers in the city you fuck with? Uh, <laughs> man, it was a good one. Bro, I don't know if, if is a uh, booby from here? Is that how you say it? I don't know, bro. I, 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 you talking about Lil Booby? Yeah. He did the lab. Yeah. I don't know. Bro, I, who, bro who did the uh, 555 for Marco? Yeah, see, Marco be rapping on a lot of his shit. I don't know if he's from here or not. I don't know. If That's he is, a good question. If he is, he's hard. Yeah, he's hard. Uh, who else? Cause, I really should know that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but nah, because really, really for me, it's like, it's like, as a producer, I don't know. You got to be distinct. And I feel like a lot of people just making the same stuff, trying to be like, I'm going to follow this way. Mm -hmm. Like, they be like, oh, who popping right now? Let me make a that type beat. Yep, exactly. Like, you probably got hella potential you just not tapped into because you're trying to please the next motherfucker. Mm -hmm. like, and it's not like it's not like it's necessarily bad. You got to, like, start from somewhere. Because that's how everybody really starts. Really, You got to, like, you know, draw inspiration from somewhere. But, like, until you find your own sound, that's where you finna just, like, pop off. We got so much sleeper... People the here. silent silent grind it's a camp we got called silent grind that's really what i, I associate with them too them boys can produce they mm. they make all types of beats they crazy that's the, uh home h-o-m three he hard he was on east side on my song east side okay he's hard uh malik z hard who else when you want it's hard w-e-n-y-u-w-n-t he's hard it's hell like i just i just was with him okay but yeah but producers like i don't think you got too many that's Got a distinct sound, and if so, they just not vocal yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nah, and then another thing is, bro, like just in indie in general, we gotta do more network. You know what I'm saying? Like, For sure. It, it, it's it's coming along like you got the Grapevine events and stuff like that. If mm -hmm. y'all heard of it, but it's just like a lot of stuff, bro. It be people here, but we don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like we ain't we ain't tapped in with each other as much as we should be. The city not that big. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um. Who you work with video wise, videographers? Man, P5. The homie P5. That's, that's my white boy. He can so to crazy. Go <laughs> white, white boy, man, he go, man. That's the thing with him though is like, cause he did he did the uh PDT music video. We probably had like an hour worth of film. And I'm thinking like, damn, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. He turned that mother to a movie. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, I don't know how he did it. Because that was the same day we had held an event to get food to the kids. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it was like on the back end of the event. And mm. we was slow on time and it was just like let's try to get this done and I, he made something out of nothing for real and no, i was just like oh sure. yeah so i'm sticking with him because he creative he liked to do it different and then when i pitched him ideas he was like he wasn't scared to try it he was like i'm gonna try this and i'm gonna try that and he sent it to me i'm like oh yeah this works he's also like real consistent real consistent real and consistent. he really cared he really cared because like a lot of people get them videos back and it just be a bunch of transitions mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> be a bunch of transitions and colors mm -hmm. <laughs> they'll be like all right but he made sure to like like for instance my cousin was on my shoes and rp capo but my cousin was on my shoes, and I ain't tell him to like zoom in on none of that. Yeah. He did all that itself. It was just yeah. like his attention to detail was real big, and I was like, oh yeah. So I'm sticking with him. That's my guy. That's what's up. I mean, besides him, my, my uncle shoot my uncle shoot videos too, but he be he the guy. He he's a cool guy. J Ro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna shout out my uh my girlfriend real quick. Oh, yeah. Madison Nessie Dam on Instagram. N e s y d a m. She's tough. She, can't, she made a video for um, DZ. DZ. DZ, DZ, not, not nice. nice. Yeah. So, you know, Hit another pay, cool attention rapper to, pay attention to her. Shout out DZ, too. For sure. For sure. Um, so, out of all the songs you done put out, mm -hmm. well, really not. I'm going to just offer rest easy. All right. <laughs> if, if you had to pick one song like nobody ever heard your music before and you wanted them to get the the, the picture of 4200 chord what song would it be what, what would be the first song you played for east side east side. east side but as as bad as i want to say rest easy itself because yeah. it's just like off the rip because like that's why it's the intro because it was mm -hmm. just like that puts you right where i'm at like it ain't no extra build up no none of that it's just like off the rip you're gonna see where we coming from and then you know take what it, if you feeling that then you gonna listen to the rest of the album mm -hmm. but like Esau for sure, cause like Esau got a story to tell. That's and the hook, one, and so. the hook, crazy. That's the, that's the, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. I'll play that song out. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, 
So we was talking off camera a little bit earlier. We was talking about how um, like y'all kind of y'all wear a lot of hats. Like y'all do a lot of different shit. For sure. Can y'all speak on the importance of like? Cause like you said, you make your your covers. Yeah. Can you speak on the importance of that? Man, I don't know. I feel like if you if you spend your time as an artist, you gotta understand like you your brand and everything is a business. Like all of that, it, it's all it's all important. So like if you allow other people to come in, you have to be a hundred percent invested into them. And like they and also the same to you. Mm -hmm. So like it feel like I can't put that much in the people. Like these days especially like because everybody don't got your best interest. Cause down the line somewhere somebody gonna think them over you. So like I can't really I, I can't really afford to waste time with uh, somebody and they wishy washy ways. You know what I'm saying? So like <laughs> for me I just gotta be like, you know, I, okay if somebody get something gotta get done, I'm gonna go ahead and just knock it on out. And I guess I, I really wasn't always like that. I really was postponing a whole lot of stuff, but I started to put my foot down with it, like marketing, all that. I really just started studying it, understanding it. Because, cause like I said, all right, this is going to tap into the story. So the pops that passed, yeah. the motorcycle accident, that's my adopted father. Okay. I met my real father, who's the family in Chicago and all that. So that's, uh. my, that's how my family's from Chicago. And he'd been locked up. So I'd be chopping it up with him on the phone sometimes. And he'd be, he'd be giving me like tidbits on marketing, business, and all that. Mm. So like really I started to value the importance of a brand and a motto and what it stand for. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're going to have that type of, if you're going to have the drive to be an artist and in this industry, you got to understand like it ain't, it ain't too many people that really care about you. Mm -hmm. So like I, I have to care about myself all the way around and just be willing to do it all by myself. Mm. And did you just meet your father? Like Man, I met my pops. Uh, Late last year, well, not not late last year, late the year before, like late 2019. Yeah, mm -hmm. late 2019, I finally talked to him. Okay, and like just questions on that, like a lot of people would be kind of sour to when their father was like late in, in, into their life, or For sure. you know, they kind of had a ways, you know, you can't yeah. really tell somebody how to act. But what made you like take that type of high road and still want to communicate with him? And you know what I'm saying, <laughs> especially while he's incarcerated, yeah, man. See, his, his thing was because. When I was young, oh yeah, this is a story. When I was young, he was introduced to me as mm. my uncle because he was such a bad father. So he would babysit me as my uncle. Okay. And then one day he popped out on me and was like, hey, I want to tell you I'm your dad. I'm like four, four or five. And he's like, I want to tell you I'm your dad. And I was like, man, shut up. Like, I was like, you tripping. And then I got in the car with my mom's, and I was like, he said he my dad. That last time I seen him. Mm. Like she was like he tweaking because he wasn't supposed to say nothing because I was already under the impression that my adopted father was my dad. So then uh, you know all these years go by, you know they tried to reach out to me. That side of my family tried to reach out to me, and I was like, nah, I'm cool. I was like, I don't want to do it because you know I've been I've been straight this long. I get to like 18, and then it really hit me like, what's how could it hurt to have that conversation? You know maybe I need some closure, to help mm. me grow as a man. So I was just like, all right, I had that conversation, and you know ever since then we can chop it up every now and then. So yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, that's deep. A lot of people, a lot of people can't move like that. For you know? sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's different. Trapping, you work too hard.